Hey guys, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. So I made it to the other side. I'm here at motherhood and I've got a really healthy and happy baby to prove it. So thank you guys all so much for the warm wishes. And as you probably remember, before I gave birth, I shared my hospital bag essentials video. And it was a really favorite one of mine. Um, and you know, I'm a type A girl. So I wanted to be as prepared as humanly possible. But like everything in motherhood, things do not go as planned. So today I want to take a little walk down memory lane and share with you some of the things that I definitely never even took out of the bag and the things that were truly essential for labor and delivery. Let's do this. Um, obviously I'm trying to be flexible as much as a type A personality can be, but we still want to write things out so that we have an idea of what we wanted to do, um, but also so that we can pass this on to our labor and support team so that they understand what my wishes are. So funny story, totally forgot the birth plan. Um, I thought I did at least and then like I was scrambling I was like which pocket is it in is it my purse and is it my bag which bag is it in I was trying to pull it up on my phone to share with everybody I eventually found it and thankfully all the labor and delivery staff were super accommodating in following my wishes and you know as best as they could uh, so I think that was definitely a must bring next hair elastics I know this sounds silly, but of all the things, when I ask all my mom friends, what do I make basically really need at the hospital? They all just say you need hair elastics. So the funny thing is, is I brought one hair elastic. I mean, I brought them all, but I only needed the one that was in my hair. I don't know why in my head I thought I needed to like bring a super bag full of hair elastics as if like, you know, in the, in the few hours that I was in the hospital that they were just gonna keep breaking. I guess it's good to have a backup, but at the end of the day, if you came with a hair elastic in your hair, you probably are good to go. Just saying. I love candies. I love candies on a good day. And I'm sure when I'm in labor and I need a little quick hit of energy, I'm definitely going for the sugar. Oh, guys, bring the candies. I ate so many candies because at some point I got an epidural and at that point they weren't really wanting me to eat anything. Um, so all I consumed was candies, hard candies, apple juice, and like 12 popsicles. I cleaned them out at popsicles. I ate all the popsicles in the ward. So if your ward has popsicles, eat the popsicles. But the downside of all this was once I had the epidural, I couldn't walk, therefore I couldn't brush my teeth. And my mouth felt like, like it was so grainy and, and it, you know that film that you get on your, on your teeth and like in the sides of your mouth when you've had too much sugar? That's what I was dealing with and it was driving me crazy. So that's the only downside of eating all those candies other than the sugar high, but you're gonna definitely need some energy and candies are a kind of delicious way to do that. Belly band. So I heard about this because I am kind of like a fitness buff and one of my like big fears is something called diastasis recti. If you haven't heard of that, it's basically the separation of your abdominal muscles. Um, and it's very common during pregnancy, if not pretty much inevitable to different degrees. Uh, I've tried really hard to avoid any kind of strenuous core work during my pregnancy so as to minimize the damage. So here's the funny thing about the belly band. I was like really gung-ho on using this right from the get-go in the hospital, like right after delivery, but my stomach felt like shit because I had something called a retained placenta, which basically meant that my placenta got stuck in there and it didn't just like flop out like it does for a lot of women or was like easily delivered. The doctors had to literally reach their whole arm up into me and kind of scrape it out while literally pounding on my belly. Two huge, they weren't huge, but two adults were just punching my stomach trying to get this placenta out. So let's just say my belly was a little bit sore and I did not really feel like squeezing myself into like a corset. Um, and I didn't really feel like using it again for like a week after giving birth. So did I need to bring it to the hospital? No, I probably also wouldn't bring it again next time, even if I did not have a retained placenta because you're just sore. You just feel like crap. You don't want to be like trying to squeeze into tight little clothes. Just saying. Heating and cooling packs. 
So I have this little heat pack that is, um, you plug it in. I like this because then I don't have to go and like microwave a bag if I may not have access to a microwave while in the hospital. Ditto for the cooling pads because you may not have access to a freezer to kind of keep freezing like a gel pack or, you know, an ice pack. So these were things that I actually legit thought that I was definitely going to use. Heating, I did not want anything to do with. I was already sweating balls in there during labor and delivery. The cooling packs probably would have come in handy had I remembered that I packed them. But what I ended up doing was just having my husband grab uh, a towel and wet it into really cold water and then just put it on my back. And that worked just as well. I mean, you're right there next to a sink. You could just kind of keep running under that cold water. Um, and also on the ward, a lot of them have ice. So you can also just grab some ice and put it in a towel as well if you don't want to have to schlep or buy any of these kind of cooling packs. Great idea, but when you're in tons of pain, you're really not thinking about all of these little tools and tricks that you may be packed away. Let's move on to my hubby, my beloved husband. Okay, so reading materials. This is his favorite magazine. So, and this one's for me, obviously, or maybe it's for him, I don't know. She's looking pretty good. So here's the thing, when you're in labor, you have no patience to be like sitting down, leisurely flipping through the Rob Report or Cosmopolitan. You are working, there's a reason they call it labor. And your birth partner, or in my case, my husband, he's working too, because he's gotta be there to support you. There was no downtime. And the downtime that we did have when I finally got the epidural was spent sleeping and trying to get like a little bit of, uh, of rest before the big show. For a little more high tech option, the iPad. Netflix is key, folks. So ditto with the iPad. Phone's probably more than enough and you're gonna be busy. And I just think it's really funny that I was thinking that after I gave birth, I'd have like a ton of leisurely time to just la lounge around and like watch Downton Abbey or other Netflix shows or read my magazines. Not happening. You're spending that whole time just dealing with a screaming child and trying to figure out how to feed it. Uh, so yeah, you're not gonna have any fun times in the hospital. Wait till you get home. There's gonna be plenty of late nights to enjoy that Netflix show. I'm planning to probably want to use the shower while I'm in labor, but I kind of am grossed out by the idea of like being in the shower with where other people were previously given birth. I know they clean them, but still, it's a weird thought for me. So this is going to kind of protect my feet from being on the gross uh, hospital shower floor. So I know it was in my birth plan to uh, get in the shower and I even made a big stink at the beginning of my labor because I wanted a room with a shower just because of that. Um, but when it got down to it and I was in so much pain, the last thing I wanted to do was get into like a hot steamy shower or really like any water. Um, by the time I decided I wanted an epidural, I like had it in my head and I was like, no fucking way a shower is going to cut it when I need like full on medical intervention here, folks. Uh, so, hey, you might feel differently. You might be able to, to get away with just, an, um, just a shower or something like that for pain management, but it was not gonna do it for me. So this is partially for my hubby and partially for me, depending on the time. I mentioned before that a lot of hospitals won't let you eat, but they'll let your husband eat. That's, that I know for sure. And my husband is going to be hungry. So I've got lots of like granola bars and nuts and other little snacks that he can enjoy during labor. Okay, so the snack game is really important here, folks. In fact, I suggest you have a whole bag just for snacks. And you may not get to eat them all at once at least, but you might the day afterwards. And in that early stage of labor, you might as well. Now my hubby basically ate every snack I packed in there. Between the granola bars and the chips, and the nuts, he was pretty satisfied. I think he was doing okay. Plus, he went and had full meals at the cafeteria as well. And then the next day, when it comes to actually giving birth and having that kind of post-birth meal there, we gave birth in the morning, so we were lucky enough that the cafeteria was open, but I did not feel like eating for like hours after giving birth because A, I just puked my guts out, and B, I hadn't eaten for like 12 hours before that, and C, I had a postpartum hemorrhage, so I felt like shit. However, I definitely enjoyed my croissant with goat's cheese and figs a few hours later. So you may not need those snacks, but it wouldn't be bad just to have them just in case you do give birth in the middle of the night. And if you don't eat them then, trust me, you're gonna definitely appreciate the fact that you have 
KD and you know, like noodles, dried noodles that you just throw in the microwave ready to go at your disposal because you're not gonna feel like cooking anything for like weeks slash months, maybe a year after giving birth. You need to bring your own pillow because I mean, you could get away with using the hospital pillows, but if you're like me, you can't sleep on anything that is not your comfortable pillow. So you're definitely gonna wanna bring your own pillowcase because the ones in the hospital are so uncomfortable and crappy. And I also really think that having a colorful pillowcase is really a good idea as well. However, my only caveat here is probably skip the silk finish on that pillowcase because one thing that they don't tell you, nobody told me this, but after you give birth, you sweat like a pig. Definitely right after giving birth, but also for like weeks slash months plus a year afterwards. So with the silk finish, it really, really, really exacerbates that. So go with some basic cotton and some kind of bright pattern or color and you're good to go. Let's talk about what is essential for baby. So again, I've got like a whole kit here packed with stuff for baby, but some of the things that I absolutely cannot forget are some diapers because I hear that sometimes hospitals don't even provide any. So you wanna make sure that you have newborn diapers ready to go for the little bebs. So the diapers thing is really important, honestly. I know our baby and myself as well, we're a big fan of Pampers Swaddlers diapers and Pampers Sensitive Wipes. And you're gonna need a lot of them because even though that baby is so small and teeny and tiny and you cannot believe how much is coming out of them, they are gonna pee and poo up a storm even in that first day of life. So stock up and I say, you know, they call it a diaper bay for a reason. You might as well fill it up onesies or something to wear. So I'm packing a few things because I just don't know how big or cold my little one might be. So that was kind of a smart idea because even though I gave birth in April, we happened to give birth in a really freak uh, snowstorm slash ice storm. It was crazy. So having some warmer clothes was actually really, really important because we had to transport him outside into a blizzard. Um, so having a few options that uh, are different sizes was kind of a good call. Also, maybe a couple blankets because you're gonna need to put those receiving blankets on either side of the little baby's head when he's in the car seat. Um, so a few options, but you don't need to go overboard. Baby book, not like totally essential, but for me, it's just something that we might be able to play with uh, after baby's born. So it's a cute little memorabilia thing where we can take some photos and, and put some information about what time baby was born, uh, the name of course. So cute thought, I loved it. But like I said before, you are so busy after you give birth, there is no time for busting that thing out and putting all these cute little details in and writing a story. I mean, I am like seven weeks postpartum and I still haven't even opened that book because I just don't have time for it. You know, you're scrambling and that day after you give birth is so hectic, so exhausting. You know, it is probably one of the hardest days of your life. So you're not gonna have any energy left to be filling in a, a memorabilia book. All right, another essential for me, might not be essential for you guys, but I am planning to bank our cord and uh, placental tissue. So we have a kit here that has all the instructions and I basically just hand it over to the doctors and they know what to do because they're amazing. Um, but I have to make sure that I bring this to the hospital when I go into labor. So good news, everything went as planned with our cord and placental banking. I remembered the kit and it was definitely essential for me, but might not be an essential one for you guys hospital without it our car seat so we've already installed the base into our car um, that's obviously really important because otherwise well you can't really go anywhere with this okay so the car seat was definitely a must for us that one is non-negotiable uh, you're gonna need something to get from the hospital to home so don't forget it definitely don't forget that one so guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little recap. I got so many great comments from you all about how you didn't use most of the things in your hospital bag either. So it's good to know I'm not the only one who is always chronically overpacking and overprepared. So if you love this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with some of the things that you have found essential or not so essential in your hospital bag. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.